Hello there, everybody. This is Mel Allen. Talk about heavyweight slugging. Home runs nowadays are simply splashing. Oh, for 14 to home run number one. Looking fit on his first hit. Long enough for two, but half the distance would do. Three on the same date. These giant strokes all home run pokes. Four score and more. A grand slam for Davy, and the rest is gravy. And five will get you ten. He's doing it again. One strike to go, and Reggie steals the show. Long distance information all around the nation. Watch him fly, watch him fall on This Week in Baseball. American League East. In Milwaukee, Brewer fans had to look through the wrong end of the scope when viewing the comeback of the week by the first place Baltimore Orioles, a team determined to make Milwaukee not famous. Storm Davis couldn't weather the early affront of Brewer bats, which happened to lead the league in hitting. In five storming innings, nine hits, five runs. At the same time, the O's were getting nothing but O's. Jim Palmer entered in relief his first game since April, but he couldn't calm Milwaukee either. After six innings, Brewers seven, Orioles nothing. But then, lights out on Milwaukee as Cal Ripken's late inning lightning struck deep. The Rippers' 11th closed circuit blast in the 7th closes the gap to 7-5. Reliever Bob Gibson tried to calm the Oriole current in the 8th, but pinch hitter Ken Singleton found a hole, making the score 7-6. And rookie John Shelby, the Birds' leading hitter, did the same. Same place, same damage. Brewers 7, Orioles 7. And to cap it in the 10th, it was Shelby again with his third hit to give Baltimore the lead. A foreign legion of Baltimore fans cheered a four-run 10th, completing an 11-8 Oriole comeback in Milwaukee and the Orioles' 14th win in 18 games over the Brewers. In New York, the bats were back. 88 hits in six games for the Yankees and five straight wins. Billy Martin wasn't sure if he was coming or going, but the Yankees were finally going in the right direction. After losing 9 of 12, they moved three and a half games behind first place Baltimore and into the second spot in team hitting. Against Cleveland, Don Baylor found himself batting seventh and discovered a seventh heaven. His seventh homer this year and his seventh career grand slam to help the Yankees win by seven. The Brewers were next, but not even Mike Caldwell, who'd won eight straight at Yankee Stadium, could cool him off. Rick Cerrone, struggling below 200, took some tips from Lou Pinella and went three for four with three RBIs to help topple Caldwell. In the same game, Willie Randolph was positively suicidal, twice precise with a suicide squeeze. The next day, the perked up Bronx Bombers trailed four to two in the ninth before belting out more blues for the Brew Crew. Dave Winfield iced a three-run uprising with a sacrifice line drive for a 5-4 to four win and his 10th game-winning RBI. Then it was Lou Pinello's turn to put his batting instruction to use. Three for four and five RBIs for the mentor with a 324 average. And Matt Keogh, pitching his first game in pinstripes, got credit for the 8-3 to three win the first victory by a Yankee starting right-hander. How about that?
Elsewhere, prehistoric dimensions for Kirk Gibson of the Tigers. There's a belt to left. That's gone. Let's watch it. Where is it? Is it out of the park? Yes. It's out of Tiger Stadium. A shot estimated between 540 and 600 feet. One of the longest home runs ever. But only the fourth homer of the year for Gibson, who's had to battle great expectations. I think when you get all that media hype that you start reading your press clippings and you can't help it. It just takes a little bit away from your game. And if I can just take that little bit and put it back into my game this year, I think I can make uh, a bigger contribution. Well, Kirk, you sure put it all into that one. Now Lopes and right along, Davey Lopes of Oakland, who enforced his fine comeback season at age 37 with a big day against the Blue Jays. A two-run double, triple, and a grand slam home run. Altogether, seven RBIs and a 10-to-1 victory. Seven homers, 34 RBIs, and an average close to 300 for the athletic Mr. Lopes. Now, flashback to Rain Dance, our film classic from two years back. You may recall that actor Rick Dempsey, sometimes disguised as the Oriole catcher, made a big splash at Fenway Park in his Rain Delay debut. Now, Rain Dance 2, the sequel starring Rick Dempsey as Robin Yount and Sammy Stewart as Jim Palmer. Our dampened duo is ready, but first, a brief interlude. The Brewers remember that final fateful day of last year when their mighty yount did flount his worth and girth against the great veteran jockey of the mound, Baltimore's Jim Palmer. Lord knows why the Orioles would wish to replay it, but that they did for Milwaukee's amusement. The first blow. An opposite field affair. Beware. Base paths can be treacherous, even when doing the Ruthian. Ah, well, you get the idea. Yount hit a home run. said Palmer after a brief change of hue. That won't do, Batman or Robin or whatever. Take that. Oh, no, by the soaked seat of my soggy pants, you surely jest. <laughs> ah, well, the rest was history. This one, deep to left. It's going. And going. Still going. And finally, it's gone. A semi-Emmy, perhaps. Or strictly for the birds. Well, after all, twas they who lost that day. Thus concluded Rain Dance 2. As someone said, can't always keep the undergarments dry. Or as the real Robin Young said, give me back my shirt. <laughs> Now it's time for this week's Volkswagen quiz. Brought to you by the 1983 models. Nothing else is a Volkswagen. 39-year-old Rusty Staub has done the job for the New York Mets. This 10th inning game-winning pinch hit against the Cubs is one example. A 379 batting average is another. As a pinch hitter, Rusty had a streak of nine hits and ten at-bats, including seven straight. That's one short of the Major League record. Can you name the record holder? Better still, name his team. It's one and the same in this name game. Bay City views of San Francisco's Candlestick Park. 
Improved visibility for the Giants, who swept three, including this comeback first from the Atlanta Braves. In game two, the Braves got off to a high-flying four-to-nothing start and led four-to-two after six. Now consider this. In 30 games this year, Atlanta took a lead into the seventh inning, and the Braves won all 30 games. In the bottom of the eighth, the Giants have a man on for Chili Davis, who had hit a frigid streak of four for 64 going into the game. But here, a game-tying two-run homer, his ninth of the year, and the third hit of the game for the Chili man. Jeff Leonard batting next at the crest of the San Francisco Tide, untied it with giant homer number 68, the most in the National League. Giants five, Braves four, and the Atlanta 30-game streak was no more. Falling into place in the East, Expo Power from Montreal. Make that first place as the Expos were escalating with five of six wins. Chris Fire helped Montreal take two of three from the Mets, going three for three, including a three-bagger and a seven-to-two victory in the opener of a three-game series. Catcher Bobby Ramos, a native of Cuba, also went three for three in a four-to-three victory, raising his average to 388. But it was Andre Dawson who continued to lead the attack. A 328 average, 13 homers, 54 RBIs. Got quick feet, too. Speaking of which, the Expos also exposed a newfangled green foot fetish, perhaps to camouflage the fleet feet of Tim Raines, back in the running with 26 steals. On the mound, Steve Rogers looks like a shoe-in again for the All-Star team. A 9-3 record for Mr. Rogers. Mr. Lee, Charlie Lee, went nine and struck out nine for a career high. That's one way to keep the bullpen resting and ready for protecting leads in the National League East. Now a close-up look at Mr. Bucks, Bill Buckler of the Cubs. Some stars may earn bigger bucks, but Billy Bucks is as much a money player as any. The Cubs' top clutch hitter has had to make many adjustments in his 14-year career. Physical adjustments due to injured ankles and role adjustments due to different teams. Originally a Dodger, Bill hit 314 with 31 steals in 1974 to lead Los Angeles to the World Series. But shortly after, his speed was curtailed by an ankle sprain that required surgery. So Buckner had to trade in his aggressive running for aggressive hitting, especially after being traded to the Cubs in 77. It's known by just a few, but the man with the most RBIs in the National League for 1981 and 82 combined is Bill Buckner. I batted second with the Dodgers uh, uh, for the entire time that I was there, and I had a role of just moving runners over and just trying to get on base. And, uh, it took me a while to get used to uh, my role with the uh, with the Cubs, and that's uh, you know hitting in the third position and driving in runs. And uh, uh, you know I think I'm getting better at it as time goes on. With a career high 105 RBIs last year, Buckner became the first man since Keith Hernandez to drive in 100 runs with 15 or fewer homers. He also had 201 hits and was the league's toughest to strike out. In order to get runs batted in, I got to get those guys in from third and from second. So, uh, uh, you know, I just try to concentrate on, it, on doing what I have to do. If the infield's playing back, I'll hit a ground ball to the infield. If the infield's playing in, then I'll try to hit a fly ball to the outfield to get that run in. Uh, just try to play the situation in the game. From 1981 through 83, Bill Buckner got more hits than anyone else in the National League. And there's more. His defense at first base is excellent, often spectacular. And did you know he set the major league record last year for assists by a first baseman? Yet only once has Buckner appeared in an all-star game. Some of the players nationally, they recognize me as a, as a good ball player, but uh, 
you know, playing for the Cubs, you don't get a lot of recognition. But uh, maybe now that we're, you know, uh, becoming more competitive, if we can get up, uh, finish in the top two or three, uh, then maybe we'll get that recognition. But uh, I'm looking for team recognition, not individual recognition right now. With his team now in contention, both may finally get recognition. Certainly for the Cubs and Mr. Bucks, it's been a long time coming. Speaking of veteran first baseman, Darrell Evans snapped out of a mini slump with a vengeance in one game against the Astros. Three homers and six RBIs to help the Giants win 7-1. to one. Evans said analyzing videotape of his swing for a couple of hours made the difference. Now, people on this staff study videotape for many more hours than that, but don't have 18 homers or 46 RBIs or a 311 average. Incidentally, like Bill Buckner, Evans has only been to bat once in an all-star game. And now, let's fill in the answer to this week's Volkswagen quiz. Bill Stein of the Texas Rangers delivered seven consecutive pinch hits in 1981 to set the American League record. However, that's not the Major League record, and it's not the question either, so Stein is not the answer. The record and answer, Dave Philly of the Phillies. Eight straight and 58, and nine straight counting 59. Now there's a Philly fanatic. Hello there, Sugar Bear. Say you love this game but need some explaining? Anytime, sweetheart. You see, every player has a role to play. Pitchers are told to put it over. Not way over, just over. Let the batter hit the ball. Now, before it's hit, everyone is told where to play. But when it is hit, it gets confusing. Now, fielders are told to play the ball. But not overplay it, right? Just be cool. Come on now, be aggressive, but not too aggressive. Well, see, concentration is the main thing. Eye on the ball and all that. Back up, safe. Oh, well, let's ask the manager. Oof. I would teach my players to do it that way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's see him do it the right way. Two hands when you can, dirty uniform when you can. Great plays of the week from Dave Anderson, Los Angeles. Ron Oster, Cincinnati. Buddy Bell, Texas. The White Sox, Tom Pachorik. The A's, Ricky Henderson. And Dwayne Murphy, another A. The Braves, Dale Murphy? No, it's Claudel Washington. For the Phillies, Gary Matthews. Former Philly, George Bukovic, Cleveland. The Dodgers, Dave Stewart. For the Cardinals, Ozzie Smith. To the Reds and Ron Oster once again. For the Yankees, Dave Winfield. For Houston, Bill Doran. To Ray Knight. Vance Law, White Sox. And bringing it all home, Tom Brookins to Bill Fahey. In other highlights, Bobby Cox and the Blue Jays almost had one wrapped up, leading 6-4 to four in the ninth with two outs, two California Angels on base, and a two-strike count on Reggie Jackson. But t'was Reggie who really wrapped it.
three Angels come home for a 7-6 victory. In Kansas City, rookie Cliff Pasternicki might have felt a bit nervous trailing Seattle 2-1 to in the seventh and filling in for George Brett. Hitless in his first 14 at-bats, Pasternicki tried again with two on and hit the jackpot. A three-run game-winning homer. The first base hit of young Pasternicki's career. <laughs> Better watch it, George. In Toledo, Terry Felton of the AAA Mud Hens was still losing. 20 straight counting winter ball, not to mention 16 straight with Minnesota. Well, it's, uh, it's starting to bother me a little bit. and uh, Yeah, it's a little bit, it's getting to my head a little bit. I just want to, just want to get it finished. And Terry finally did, beating Pawtucket 5-2 for his first win in two years. Finally, pitcher Bob Welch of the Dodgers, recipient of this week's Gillette Special. Against the Reds, Welch got two hits, including a homer, for the game's only run. Mighty hot hitting for a guy batting 115. And considering he also shut out the Reds, well, that's something special. A one-man, one-to-nothing Welch squelch. How about that? The thing that we want to do with myself as a starter is to go out there and take my time and uh, be aggressive and keep our club in the ball game uh, and go out there and have fun. That's what it's all about. No sour grapes there. Congratulations, Bob. That's all for now, folks. See you next week on This Week in Baseball.